The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship this evening. Tonight we have a couple of things out of the ordinary. As always, we're celebrating the Sunday following, and this coming Sunday is, uh, will be All Saints Sunday, where we remember those who've gone before us in the faith and who now rest from their labors, as we say, those who are no longer living on this earth, but we celebrate the fact that they're uh, with their Lord now. Uh, as part of that uh, service, we'll be singing hymn 677, which is for all the saints who from their labors rest, which is a great hymn. It's eight verses, and it's maybe a bit much for this size congregation. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the first four verses before the sermon, and then we're going to do verses five through eight at the end. That's why it looks weird on the board there. So we're going to do one through four before the sermon, five through eight. Those are both hymn 677 there. Uh, we're also going to use a, a, a new order of service. It's not entirely new. Some of you have done it before, but uh, we now have green sheets, and we'll be using order of service number five. We begin with hymn 670. Please stand for singing.
peace at last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing, sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning. Your truth at the close of the day. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess, I confess that, that I have sinned, sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me, that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. We rest in his peace and rise in the morning to serve him. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading for All Saints Day is from the book of Revelation, chapter 9, verses 9 through 17. John writes this. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our epistle lesson from 1 John chapter 3, the first three verses. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself, just as He is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 12. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Our hymn of the day is number 677. We'll sing the first four verses. Blessed. 
and some of them make sense. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, these people are blessed. On the flip side of the coin, some don't make as much sense. The poor in spirit, the meek, those who are persecuted are blessed. And there's the one we focus on today. Those who mourn. This one's definitely hard to understand. Honestly, I've struggled with it through the years. How are we blessed when we mourn? We usually don't think of mourning as a blessing. Mourning is a difficult thing. I think it's safe to say that all of us, or nearly all of us, have experienced loss. And we know how hard that can be. We know the struggle it is to keep getting up every day when an important person is missing. We know that empty chair at the table that brings sadness to every meal. And especially at this time of year, we think about the holidays that are coming up, and certainly those can be difficult when someone's missing. Mourning is a struggle. It's difficult. We don't know how to do it. It just kind of happens to us. So the question is kind of obvious, I think. How are we blessed? By mourning. Well, first, mourning makes us more like Jesus. He mourned. When we're brought to tears over the loss of someone we love, we can take comfort in the tears of Jesus over the city of Jerusalem, the people that he loved, or outside the tomb of his good friend Lazarus, or in the garden the night he was betrayed. There are certainly plenty of things in which we are not at all like Jesus, but when we mourn, we mourn like he did. It also causes us to turn to Jesus and his word for help. I hope that in difficult times, we all turn to the word of God to give us strength and wisdom to carry on. When we mourn the death of someone, the Bible reminds us that God is the giver of life, and more importantly, the giver of eternal life. We are reminded of how Jesus' death on the cross is our death. We are reminded that his life is our life, and it is eternal. When Jesus rose from the dead on that first Easter, that is for us the promise of our eternal life. When we picture that resurrection, it leads us to picture the resurrection of those we love, and our own resurrection. We are blessed by the word of God in our mourning. The loss that causes us to mourn can also cause us to see death how God sees it, as a beautiful passage into something wonderful beyond our imagination, and not how the world sees death, the worst possible thing to be feared. Psalm 116, verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. We are comforted by the fact that the loss that we've suffered, which we probably consider to be a terrible thing, is precious in the sight of the Lord. We are reminded of his great love that causes him to rejoice over the fact that one of his people is coming home to live with him forever. We are blessed by the comfort that we receive. Another way that mourning is a blessing is that through it we are drawn closer to the whole body of Christ. I had sat through the liturgy many times before my dad died, but after going through his death, the words of the service of the sacrament took on new meaning for me. When the pastor says, therefore angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you. I thought about how many times I'd taken that sacrament next to my father, and I still do. In our worship, we are reunited with those saints who have gone before us, the saints in heaven and the saints on earth worship together. We are blessed by the great cloud of witnesses that surround us and strengthen us. In this world, we struggle. We struggle because of sin. It is sin that disrupts our priorities in our lives. Sin destroys relationships and causes stress. Sin brings sickness and death into the world. Sin causes our, the people that we love to leave us. Sin causes a distance even between us and God. 
makes it difficult to believe and to trust and to follow. Jesus came to deal with that problem of sin. He came to win forgiveness for us on the cross and to give us righteousness and life. Jesus came that the burdens and problems of this world are simply temporary. We have an eternal home where none of those things exist. We thank God that our loved ones who have gone before us now enjoy that while we still struggle here below. Our mourning causes us to think about those things. It forces us to look at Christ. He doesn't cause death, although sometimes he gets blamed for it. No, Jesus gives life. And he gives it abundantly. And he gives it eternally. So in your mourning, have confidence in what Jesus has done. He has won the victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil. He's won it for you. He's won it for those who've gone before you. Believe that. As Martin Luther once said, when I look at myself, I don't see how I can be saved. When I look at Christ, I don't see how I can be lost. In your morning, look to Christ. Be comforted. And be blessed. Amen. We confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all that harms the body and assaults the soul, and for trust to commend ourselves in all things into the hand of our faithful God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the ministers of the church, that by their preaching, the Spirit would gather the lost, kindle faith in those who do not yet believe, and sustain us all to the day of Christ's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all Christian homes, that they may be places where faith is nurtured, and where we may learn to live our new lives in holiness and righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the persecuted who suffer for the sake of Christ, that God would call all to righteousness by their witness, and for the nations that God would establish his peace, make our leaders wise and honorable, and deliver us from violence and oppression. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who call on our Heavenly Father in any kind of special need, we name them now. That God would comfort them with his abiding presence, grant them patience in the midst of suffering, and according to his will, release them from their afflictions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. In thanksgiving for the faithful who have gone before us, and for the sign of faith, and with the sign of faith, and now rest from their labors, that we may be brought with them to everlasting life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Almighty Father, we give thanks to you that you have washed us in the blood of the Lamb, written our names in the book of life, and made us a royal priesthood and heirs of an eternal inheritance. Though we are unworthy of your saving grace, we pray you to hear us in the name of Jesus Christ, in whom, with whom, and through whom, all honor and glory is yours, Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will 
be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We close with the last four verses of hymn 677. City, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Glenn Kleppe. Our address here is 410 Main Street South, and our uh, phone number is 320-629-3683. Our email is zionpinecity at gmail.com, and our website is zionpinecity.org. There, now you know that. Uh, we, uh, we had a fundraiser uh, last weekend, last Saturday, uh, for our preschool. We had our chili uh, cook-off and uh, just so you know uh, for any if you know any of the people of Zion um, we kind of took back the chili cook-off you know for a few years there people from outside the church were winning it I was a little frustrated with that because we are the best chili makers in town uh, but this year of the six places the top three red chilies and the top three white chilies of those six places we took five of them we only let one go to an outsider this year. And uh, one of our members, who's, who you may know, Ben Bloomquist, won first place in both categories, which seems like it should be illegal, doesn't it? But anyway, we let it go, and uh, we, we gave him the blue ribbons in both categories this year. 
and uh, it, it is a lot of fun. We, we have a good time with the cook-off and we have a good time sitting down then and eating all those chilies. We had 23 different chilies this year to sample and uh, we made a little over $2,500 for the preschool. So it was a great evening uh, last uh, Saturday. Uh, we are, of course, coming up on the hol holiday season and, and, of course, in December on our Wednesday services, we'll be having Advent services uh, in November, uh, just to let you know, in three weeks, it's the 22nd, the night before Thanksgiving. And we will have our Thanksgiving service. We always have it at this time, 7 o'clock on, on Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, this year, it's going to be at Living Branch in North Branch. The service will be there at 7 o'clock. I didn't know how I could do services both places, so we're having it there. Uh, and uh, the other side of that coin is on, on Christmas Day, uh, we're having our usual service at 10 o'clock and it will be here and there's no service down in North Branch so we're gonna see how that works so I encourage you to uh, if the weather is good hop in your car and drive down to, to Living Branch and, and worship with our brothers and sisters in Christ uh, down there uh, we do have a, an adult Bible class going on Sunday mornings and we have moved from the topic of vocation to the topic of community it's being taught by our elders and it's a, a good study I encourage you to attend that. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.